Pete Carroll mentioned this on Monday, and we didn't really get a chance to dive into it. But Jaron Reed's impact, I don't know if he's getting the amount of attention he deserves because when you play defensive tackle, that's not a sexy position. You know, you're not going to rack up sacks. You're not going to rack up turnovers. You're not going to have the highlight level plays like Devin Witherspoon did in just one game on Monday. But Jaron Reed has just been solid. This man has been a stalwart on the defensive line. He has just taken on double teams, and he's locked everything down. We have some numbers to kind of explain this, but also, why not just hear from Pete Carroll on why Jaron Reed has been so important to this defensive line? They've really started to mesh together and taken advantage of of uh, the game plan and the calls and, and uh, listening to the right voices out there to, to make the calls and to make the adjustments and things like that. Um, I, I can't tell you how much Jay Reed is, you know, how important he has been to us. He's such a veteran that uh, he really commands the calls in, in the system and the game plan and all of that. So he's a big factor. And um, as the guys communicate with him, they, they just seem to get more well-versed uh, to take advantage of what we're seeing, you know, and sometimes it sets and alignments and formations and D&Ds and all those things. Um, it's a lot of stuff for, for guys to, to handle, and um, um, Jaron is really good at it, you know, so he, he's, he's helping. I got to say, Mike, I did not expect this from Jaron Reed. Mm-hmm. Like, when I thought they, they signed him back, I was like, okay, you know, he's familiar and, and everything. And, you know, I watched him play in Kansas City, and I thought he was the same, pretty close to the kind of player that he was here. This is different. This is different. And, you know, you mentioned it, that a defensive tackle, a guy that's living down inside, you know, lining up over guards and centers, you don't get stats. But he does. He's got 16 sa- uh, total uh, tackles. Um, and then he's got the, the two sacks for 14 yards. And... You know, and they double count the tackle for loss, so it's yeah. the same thing. But he's also knocked down a pass, recovered a fumble, and blocked a kick. Now, we lost that game, but if we'd found a way to, to win that L.A. Ram game, which I don't know how we would have done that because it was the most confusing game ever, uh, then, you know, that would have been a huge play. So, I mean, he's just been – I mean, especially for a guy – the reason why I bring up the block kick is because a lot of guys will just – I'll say this. When I was on the field goal team, I took a lot of pride in that I was really good at keeping guys off the edge because I was the little wing back guy there. And I really took a lot of pride in that. Like when I went to Denver, I was like, I want to be on this team because usually as a veteran, you don't you don't want to be on, on special teams. You know, you just want to save yourself, and save your legs. But he obviously takes a lot of pride in every single play. That's what that proves, that kick block. So, you know, and then, you know, you see the the other ones. But there's also a ton of times, like you just said, that he's taken on double teams. He's, you know, just clogging up the middle. Um, he's just – I'm. he might be the most surprising player. I mean, I, Devin Witherspoon to me was very – I just had no idea that he was that good. And, you know, I thought, okay, maybe it's going to take him a while to get going. And he's really, really good. But, yeah, I didn't I, – I think uh, Jaron Reed, probably the biggest surprise. I, I thought he was going to be solid mm. and a good player, but I didn't think he would, you know, be all this. So Seth Walder, who we had on last week, he's ESPN's lead NFL writer for analytics. So he finds, you know, some new ways to present data. They'll t- tweet out some good charts. And it's become an interesting look at, you know, different metrics that we don't really think about beyond the tackles for law, sacks, and all of this stuff. And it doesn't paint the entire picture. It's just a, another way of looking at things and taking as a whole with what we see with the stats that you're familiar with. And then things like this kind of gives you a more of a complete representation, especially I think of positions like offensive line or the interior defensive line. You might not really know how to accurately analyze. So the chart he put out there yesterday shows the the axes and I don't want to get too in depth in the math here, but the pass rush win rate where that's ESPN's metric for how many times a defensive lineman beats his offensive lineman in a given uh, set seconds that they've laid out yeah, there. Pass so, rush win rate. So how many yeah. times he wins that pass rush against his lineman and on the uh, other axis, he has that and the amount of times they're double teamed. So the best would be top right quadrant and that's where Jaron Reed is. So he's getting double teamed as much as any of the best defensive tackles in the NFL. And he's still beating his blockers among the best in the NFL. And there are not a lot of guys up there. Uh, One of the guys actually way up there is Jalen Carter. We don't have to talk about that because Devin Witherspoon has been good. But when you have Jaron Reed doing this, it kind of mitigates that. It kind of offsets what you might have gotten with Jalen Carter because Jaron Reed is right up there. And he's there's about three guys who are getting double teamed more. But Jaron Reed getting double teamed among the most 
and he's still beating his blockers among the most of any tackle in the NFL. Yeah, and he's only got five guys that are ahead of him as far as win rate. And then the only, what, two uh, ahead of him as far as number of times they've been double teamed. But you're right, one of those is is Jalen Carter. And I was just, as a side thought, if Witherspoon hadn't had that game and maybe he, well, you know, it took him a while to get in, people would be all over this chart, the Jalen Carter yeah. thing. Well, they were after week one when Witherspoon didn't play and Carter had a big game. So. Yeah, his, his win rate is second. Jalen Carter's in but just by way of comparison and we're talking about like what 40 players here uh, probably on this chart um, you know you look at Jaron Reed he is you know he's top five and th- the company he keeps other guys uh, you're looking at Quinn and Williams mm-hmm. the really good tech remember the guy and he was the guy in hard hard knocks that nobody could block yeah um, the the D tackle for the Jets so yeah you, you see some really good players you know another one there Mario Edwards He's yes. he's also on this chart. So the D line right now is playing really well. Is the point of this chart, you know? And just you know, a lot of times, like with Mario Edwards, I think he he got the strip sack the other day, right? Yeah, I think he he forced a fumble that uh, Jordan Brooks picked up, I believe. But you know, he's he's starting to you know kind of make a, a name for himself. But it's nice to see in that upper quadrant, the the one that's you know where you have the the top guys. There's two Seahawks.